Welcome to Faith Moment 20. The leader of a church I was working with in the Hereford Diocese were discussing a couple of prospective candidates to which one could become their curate after ordination. One candidate seemed to be gaining more favour than the other until a member of the group raised doubts by asking Is he saved? Now, I'm not going to report on the subsequent conversation, but I do want us to think about the question, but is he saved? Which proved to be a faith moment for me. You see, I think I know what the person meant. Is he a Christian? But I'm not really sure, because saved can be a jargon word for many important concepts. On reflecting on the evening later, it occurred to me that Christians often use jargon words, even when some have become clichés, that is, words and phrases that, that have lost their original meaning, or at least, words that include some people and exclude, not deliberately, often, the uninitiated. Using in words can be very confusing, possibly alienating to new Christians and especially those folks who are yet to make a commitment. However, using jargon is not always a bad thing. The most basic definition of jargon is the language peculiar to a trade or profession or other group. Used appropriately, Jargon can aid communication because it is an efficient way for people in similar contexts to share information. Thus it's only natural that Christians would have their own special words and phrases. After all, we have centuries of history and faith that we can reference. Using these terms has an advantage of efficiency and the ability to have deeper more specific conversations with one another. Where jargon falls, however, is shown in a secondary definition of the term. Pretentious language abounding in uncommon or unfamiliar words. Jargon can be criticised for being vague and for excluding others. It works in a specific context for some, but it really can cause confusion for others. So let's explore this a bit more and have a look at a key biblical character, St. Paul. Here we have a good example of how to be a good communicator. St. Paul recognised the importance of meeting people where they are, crossing all boundaries. He no doubt would have spoken in different ways to Jews, Gentiles and those under the law not because he was sharing different truths, but because he wanted his hearers to understand his message. St. Paul learned how to be fluent in customs and communication with his listeners. Could it be the same for us? Can we easily speak about our faith without using jargon words, especially to our friends and neighbours who don't call themselves Christian? If we want our message to cross barriers, and if we want to be an inclusive community, we need to think about how we communicate. So here are my thoughts. Let's start noticing when we use Christian jargon, and instead think more deeply about how we'd explain our terms to outsiders. Let's be critical about our language, recognising what may be unclear or confusing to outsiders. This is particularly important in these days of mass communication. Before lockdown, Christian groups primarily talked about their faith among themselves, with little formal contact with those outside. To counter, they often employed specially gifted people, called evangelists and others, to take the message to those outside. However, since coronavirus struck, limiting the ways we can meet socially, 
the main way we communicate with those outside our faith family and inside is via technology, social media and the like. In fact, anyone can look at our websites, Facebook pages, YouTube posts and take part in our online worship, prayer times, etc. from the comfort of their own homes. No longer do people have to travel to worship together. Seems to me that our current situation presents a genuine opportunity to engage with many more people than we normally would and show them how great it is to be a Christian by what we say and do. So let's grab this opportunity while we can, adapting the way we present our message appropriately to encourage others to join with us to become followers of Jesus. Thank you very much for listening.